Kenny Shamrock, the shoot fighter, taking on Kimo, whose discipline is pancreation. A bit of an unknown, but still very dangerous. Right now, a closer look at Kimo. Is there a lot about a sort of thing? Since he rocked the martial arts world in UFC 3, Kimo has been keeping a low profile, training hard, and praying even harder. One champion could barely contain him a year ago. And now, Kimo sets his sights on the Super Fight Champion. I fought Hoist Gracie, as you all know, and now I'm getting to go with Ken Shamrock. So I've had big names to fight with. I feel real blessed in that area. But my toughest opponent is myself. I have to deal with training, and I have to deal with myself and my mental attitude when I get into this octagon. He is from Waianae, Hawaii, fighting out of Kirkland, Washington, near Seattle. He was born in Munich, Germany. He's also hung out in Huntington Beach, California. A lot of locations for this man. Kimo, somewhat of a mystery. 0-1 in the UFC. He put Hoist Gracie out of contention in UFC 3, but lost by an arm lock at 4 minutes and 38 seconds. Since UFC 3, he went pro, fighting in Japan and Hawaii. No longer affiliated with infamous J Joe San, he continues to preach the world of God to anyone who will listen. And guys, they call it pancreation. He's a heavy hitter, considers himself a heavy hitter. He believes intensity over technique. He will try submissions, and he may try to shoot. In other words, he may try to take him down. He is managed by his dad, Dennis Leopoldo. And right now, that group in prayer, just outside the octagon. Kimo's opponent is the defending super fight champion, Ken Shamrock. No one has ever beaten this man in a super fight. Not Gracie, not Severn, not Taktarov. A world-class athlete and a master of submission, Ken Shamrock has truly earned the title Master of the Octagon. I fought in three consecutive super fights, and I have not been defeated. I will not be defeated in this time or in the future. Kimo, be ready. And here he comes out of Lockford, California. The submission fighter, the shoot fighter, Ken Shamrock, who knows what it's all about to be in the octagon. It's his sixth UFC. He has a super fight title. His only loss in the octagon to Hoist Gracie in UFC 1, a naked choke. He has drawn twice with Taktarov and Gracie in the rematch in the super fight. A great grappler, well versed in both wrestling skills and most importantly, submissions. He can stand on his feet, use his fists and act like a boxer. He can be a heavy hitter on the ground. And best of all, what he feels is a big factor in a 15 minute in this heat conditioning. Right now, let's go to the G-Man Rich Coins. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome the competitors for the Ultimate Fighting Championship Part 8 Super Fight. Our first competitor is a practitioner of the art of pancreation with a professional record of 2 and 1, 0 oh and 1 in the octagon, 28 years old, 6'1, 270 pounds. Fighting out of AMC Kirkland from Waikiki, Hawaii. Please welcome back to the octagon at last. One name says it all, Kimo. And his opponent, a shoot fighter from the Lions Den in Lockford, California. Three and one in the ultimate fighting championship competition. Undefeated in super fight competition. 32 years old, six foot tall, 215 pounds, former pink king of pancreas, and reigning super fight champion of the world, Ken Shamrock. Shamrock. Here's a look now at the tail of the tape for the super fight. 
Shoot fighting against Pancration. Shamrock, 32, but in marvelous condition. Kimo is 28, also in great shape. Not much of an edge in height. Kimo up to 270, a 55-pound advantage over Shamrock. It's again a West Coast show, California and Hawaii. Kimo and Shamrock, 15-minute time limit, two three-minute overtimes if needed. Oh, a right hand by Shamrock, right to the head. Shamrock drops Kimo quickly. And this is a position when you're caught in this type of a situation, you want to relax, not fight it. It's not a full-blown guillotine choke here. Shamrock has a little bit of room. He's starting to get his head out now. Yeah, Shamrock right now, Jeff, is easy. He's positioned himself for a position. He doesn't have to rush anything. Take his time. And he said that he was going to try to steer Kimo with punches, and he landed that straight right hand, grabbed the leg, and took him down. Didn't take Kimo long to parade across the apron uh, and across the octagon, Dan, and uh, then it was quick that uh, Dan Kenny put him down. Exactly. I mean, it, there was no time to actually to react at all. Right? There's just two men just charging at each other. Ken, with the experience and the grappling background, was able to come up with a better position. Right now, again, he's positioned himself. It's more intuitive by nature. Once again, 15-minute time limit. This is not, not the place Kimo wants to be. No. Again, the, the, the weight factor is not is not going to be a factor in, in his favor. You know, Ken being a very powerful individual, knowing how to use the body position, knowing how to use uh, his power and that, this, this weight factor is working against Kimo right now. Hey, Dan, you've been in this position before with a guy named Hoist Gracie, and then you've learned how to work within the guard position. How important is it for Ken Shamrock here to relax and let Kimo have to fight hard, spend energy, and then pick his moments to open up and try and strike? Well, it's, it's very important here right now, just to, like you said there, just to maintain good, proper position. Uh, Kimo has to work much harder on the bottom here right now. It's not a good position to be at from, from the bottom. You know, Hoist Gracie has showed, though, where, where the size does not make, make a difference, you know, but he's able to relax. He's spent a great deal of time down there working in this position. I'll tell you, because of the sweat out there, it's very difficult to maintain a choke. I would say it's difficult to get any kind of a strike or any kind of a real grip if you're trying to throw a person or leverage them. You have to sink it in real deep and get it tight before the opportunity for him to try and squirm away. He almost seems to be one of those kind of instinctive fighters that just uses his balance and strength and speed. I don't think he's really got a good game plan down there. Again, uh, Ken is maintaining a, a nice, strong base. He's trying to, his right knee is out there, posting well. Keeps a nice, strong base. Again, he's working the upper body right now, trying to create an opening, look for the strike, look for the arm bar. And he lands a couple of punches when the opportunity presents itself. He's mounted. He's mounted. Kimo's already covering his face. Uh-oh. And here comes maybe a choke. Oh, and he let him off. Well, that was pure strength there. He, he, had an up, he, he did not strike trying to go for the choke. And a headbutt by Kimo. I, I believe Ken was looking as Kimo was moving up. He was looking to go for the choke. Again, the power of Kimo's part. He, he traded off an opportunity to strike to go for the choke, and I wonder if that was a tactical error in his, uh, in his decision there. The crowd begins to chant for Kimo now as he lands a couple of headbutts. I, I would watch for that eye gouge because uh, yeah, he's, got his face, he's got his face, he's got his face, a hand on his face. And a left hand by Kimo, but he loses his leverage. Okay, again, Ken's maintaining a good position. The way, way is extending. He's keeping Kimo away so he can't strike him at this. He just punched the ground. Oh, he's going for the ankle. This is good, good tactic here. Again, power. The it's just power and brawl ability. Strength. Power and brawl ability, Kimo. He's an instinctive. He's just going against it. Okay, Ken just went under. He's got the ankles looking for the position. He's got the ankle. Shamrock's Nothing got yet. Kimo's ankle. Nothing they get yet. away. He, he's, Nothing he's, yet. he's getting it out. Nothing yet. Off Again, the slimy. The heat. Kimo spit his mouthpiece out, breathing hard. The the Shamrock moving. I think, I think he's going to get him. It's basically fatigue right now on Kino, Kimo. He looks like he's, he's wearing down. Shamrock Nothing continues yet. that hold, though, on that left leg. And that is it. Ankle lock. Ankle lock. And Shamrock. Shamrock does it. He had the ankle. And he wins it. A 
terrific couple of minutes. No matter how strong or how tough you are internally, when these locks get applied, you've got to tap out. If it's around the neck, the ankle, the arm. Well, Shamrock's got a nice mouse underneath that right eye, but he wins with the submission hold at 424. And Dan, I thought he had it, got away for a moment to look, and then he just kept on working on that ankle. Yeah, at, at, at first he didn't quite have the position switched down there, Bruce. And he, just, he stayed with it, he stayed patient, kept working, keeping the position on. He created the angle that he was looking for. Chemo put up a terrific effort, Dan. All right. No doubt about his strength. Let's take a look at a couple of the replays, guys. As Shamrock celebrates his victory with Commissioner Art Davey and his lovely wife, Tina. What I saw happening there near the end was Kimo, the fatigue factor was setting in. He couldn't do all that instinctive, just busting loose kind of stuff he does. It, he he became, finally wore out. He became stationary, he became stationary. Okay, Ken Shamrock moving in, got the position. At first, Kimo did have that the uh, guillotine position, but you see what it had, be in the heat, He's there to slip out. In this position right now, Kimo was, ma was maintaining two steel. If he would have kept the motion going, kept rolling, kept rolling he would have been rolling. on the slide out. And, and Shamrock was doing that just a couple of moments earlier. He kept rolling and rolling and rolling and trying to get himself in the position he wanted there. He was like a pit bull with that ankle, though. He was not letting go of that ankle. He was getting kicked, he was getting hit, everything, but Ken just held tight to that ankle. Shamrock wins his second super fight. He's been in all four. He's 2-0-2 two, oh, two in those super fights. And he takes on a very strong, gutsy, well-prepared chemo. And he had a couple of moments there where it looked, uh, it looked like it wasn't going to be easy, where chemo could have landed some big punches. Yeah, and the feet there are exactly right. Uh, that's where I thought the power of chemo was going to be was on his feet. Um, moving around the octagon, but it, Kimo has had that, from what I've seen in the past, he's charged right in. He doesn't really anticipate anything, he just charges right in. All right, let's go to Jeff Blatnick right now. Jeff? I'm with the victorious Ken Shamrock, and Ken, you said you were gonna steer him with punches if he came bullying in. It seemed you landed a quick right hand, or is this what you expected from Kimo? Yeah, well, he's either gonna try and kickbox me and go the distance, or he's gonna have to end the fight quick. So he tried to come in quickly. I have to ask you this. You were in a position of the mount. You looked like you could throw punches. When he turned his back on you, you deliberately didn't throw a punch. It looked like you went for a choke, and suddenly you were on your back. Yeah. I didn't want to throw too many punches on the ground. I want to beat him with submission. So Was that a wise decision on your part as you look back on it? Yeah. I didn't waste as much energy. Well, you certainly have those submission skills. Tell us how you set up the ankle lock. Um, it was a knee bar. What an ankle lock. It was a knee bar. I just kept tucking, and he'd bend his leg and block it. I'd tuck again. Eventually, he moved the wrong way, and I locked it out. Ken, you've proven to the world here in the UFC competition you're the best. How can you improve upon your performance, and where do you see yourself going? Um, I don't know. I'm going to enjoy this one. You know, heal up my bruises and plan for the next fight. Well, Ken, you certainly now are a, a staple here at the UFC. You, you fought in every super fight. You are undefeated in those super fights. Who's your next opponent in the next one? Uh, rumors have it it's going to be Dan Severn. I'd like to fight Dan again. Uh, rumor has it it was a fluke that I beat him. So let's do it again. And we'll see whether it was a fluke or if it's for real. I haven't heard any rumors that it was a fluke. You certainly perform. You perform well. Ken, we want to wish you the greatest of success. You have been one great fighter and one classy individual. Yeah, I appreciate it, and I appreciate all the fans out there. I appreciate the people in uh, Puerto Rico for backing us up on having a show here, and I'm looking forward to the finals. Ken, our very best from the USC. Congratulations. Thank you very much, and uh, see you all back home.